It sounds like the stuff of legends, but to veteran fishermen off New England's coast, it was the real deal. Codfish so plentiful that it served as the cornerstone of the region's economy. Today, however, New England fishing is nothing like it was even 30 years ago. Older fishermen say those were the days when fat cod seemed to fill the ocean. All you had to have was a boat, and you could follow anybody you wanted and sat around them and catch fish. It was that simple. I would go out here 25 miles and come in with 5,000 pounds of fish every day. Every fish, you could barely roll them over with your wrist, barely roll them over to cut them. They were so big, they would use, I mean, average probably 35 to 40 pounds, every fish. It was the most fantastic fishery, the most fantastic thing I ever saw. Old salts do like to tell stories, but these are not exaggerations. If you didn't see any cod down there, you would throw the line out to one side and, and just keep bring it back and the whole school would come back to you. It was, that's how thick they were. But by the 1980s, the fleets had grown bigger and much more powerful. With added technologies like side scan sonars, GPS systems, and fish finders. Scientists and fishermen had begun to notice that individual cod were getting smaller and that cod populations were shrinking and disappearing from inshore areas. We did overfish, I mean, that's where they went. Then I mean, the fish couldn't stand up to the technology. It made fishermen out of people. I mean, technology made fishermen out of people who couldn't really find their way in the ocean. But, you know, if you have everything. By some accounts, the fish were changing their behavior as well in ways that made it easier to catch them. They stopped spreading out across the bottom. They bunched up. Um, and the scientists say it's a survival technique, but it's the worst possible thing they could have done. The fleets searched out these hot spots in the water and practiced something called pulse fishing. Pulse fishing that I've defined it is when a lot of boats hit a population of fish, fish it very hard to a point where it's either depleted or collapsed, and then simply moves on to another. At the time, no one knew that many of these hot spots were essential breeding grounds for cod, or that when the hot spots were fished out, it would take decades to rebuild them. So we caught the big ones, caught the little ones, and then we're turning around and blaming everybody. Uh, everybody is turning around and blaming everybody else that uh, they were the problem. In the 1990s, cod counts hit their lowest point in recorded history. Just 12% of the level thought to be necessary to sustain a healthy population. It wasn't very long before we had wiped it out. But there's been no fish up inside of the 20 or 30 miles from shore for, like I said, 15, 20 years. Today there are some signs of recovery. And it could be better still, according to the old salts. If we heed the science and protect the spawning fish, they say this recovery will grow and spread. I really think that science needs to take over. But we need to start listening to science. And if that happens, there is a chance that Cape Cod will once again live up to its name. We can do it. It can be done. I know it can be done. There's a lot of brilliant people. If we send somebody to the moon, we sure as hell can, can fix this fishery. <laughs>